naked shamanism. Welcome to With Insights Radio. I'm your host, Iggy Garcia. I will take you on a journey across the universe through shamanism, metaphysical, and holistic. So sit back and relax and enjoy the show. Welcome everybody to Higgy Garcia Live, episode 155. Today is uh, cultural expectations. That's what we're going to be talking about. So in this episode, I'll be talking about cultural expectations in our world and in our personal lives and what that means. And if, it, if you relate to that. So today we're going to light a black candle. The black candle is spell breaking, separation, banishing, evil, Clearing the space, um, just moving that energy that's, you know, that's not good. And we're going to move it right through. So, we're going to give thanks to our ancestors, like we always do. I hold this candle up high to my ancestors who came before me, who trailblazed the path, who had the vision and the desires and the dreams and... And they, the things they couldn't accomplish in their lives, hopefully we can accomplish in this in this moment in time to share and feel what we need to feel and share. Um, as I am, will one day be an ancestor and hopefully be remembered for my contributions and for the things I do. And I remember my ancestors for their contributions. Sometimes they're good, sometimes they're bad, but we move and we clear the energy and we give thanks and we honor and move things into a, the proper space. Oh. Excuse me. <clears throat> Woo. Just been one of those days. Not a bad day, just been one of those days, you know. Gonna light my my sage here. Good stuff. Just to kind of get us in the frame of mind. Clearing, cleansing giving thanks what is above is below giving thanks take the smoke into my eyes so I can see all the beautiful things take the smoke into my mouth so I can speak all the beautiful things take the smoke into my ears so I can hear all the beautiful things take the smoke into my spirit and my soul in my heart to be one with all the beautiful things in the universe and may the highest purpose be served, and may God surprise us. Oh. All right, so that candle will burn as we continue our show. So I wanted to take a second just to kind of maybe just get everybody to get a moment to just relax a little bit and just settle in. It's been a long week. It's been it's been tough for a lot of people this week, and I want to send that positivity toward to you. And receive the positivity from you as well. You know what we put out we want to receive back. So giving that. Give us a thought. Give us a moment to think. Give us a moment to process. Take a deep breath in through our nose. And exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Next one, take a deep breath and hold. <sighs> Releasing. <clears throat> Letting go. One of the hardest part is winding down. Sometimes when you come home from work, winding down and getting into that place where you need to be. And I know it's difficult for some of you. I know it's difficult for, for me sometimes, you know. But regardless, we do the best we can. And we're in the best uh, moments we can. And, you know, 
our home is our usually our is our place where we feel really good we feel safe where you know we just kind of we're able to be ourselves and do the things we need to do and so when you come home i want you to feel relaxed i want you to feel comfortable because that's what you should be able to come to your safe place not all of you go to a safe place not all of you have a safe place but regardless it's good to know that you can at least do these little meditative moments of the breath work if you want to do some look some more breath works that i've done in the past just go to one of my very first episodes on youtube uh just look up you know iggy garcia and look for this the banner that says it's good to be here and just go to iggy garcia tv and you can actually see i have meditative uh breath works there that you can study can do <clears throat> i have a lot a whole library of different things that you can listen to and be part of and share and just take with you when you're i'm not around because there's a lot of good information there's been years of uh, information that's been compiled in my youtube uh, you know uh, youtube space there on on youtube so you know it's good sometimes you want to hear it and some sometimes you just want to watch it but if you don't want to watch the videos you can actually listen to the videos on itunes you can listen to the my my podcasts on spotify wherever podcasts are free you'll find me so it's nice to once in a while pop in something for an hour or 30 minutes and just listen to some positivity some things that will change and help your life some things will put you in a better frame of mind so i encourage you to listen to my podcast and um you know pick out some things you like You'll see an evolution, a change as we progress, even as I progress through the podcasting and through sharing on this with Insights Radio and different networks that I've been on. You know, you start to evolve at yourself. You start to work on the things about yourself. You know, because the whole, the whole gamut of everything that we're doing is that we're working on us. And when we work on us, is because we're trying to get better. And, you know, sometimes the biggest challenge is ourselves. The biggest challenge is our egos. The biggest challenge is our inner child, you know, being childish or childlike. And those are the things that we run into. And sometimes it's not easy. It's not easy being me. What's they say? Not easy being me. <laughs> well, it's not easy being you either. But we try to do our best. And right now, you know, we're trying to do our best in the frame of the construct of how this matrix of this world that has been developed for us. You got to understand, and I have to understand sometimes, that ancestral family members, ancestral teachers, ancestral leaders, uh, you know, ancestral monarchies, all created the systems that we live from today. Everything that how we live today is because somebody had an idea, somebody had uh, a way to control, to manipulate, to, to harness, to create a system that would benefit, to help. You know, you can look at it however you want. In every any kind of direction you want to look at it because it can it can be perceived as a good thing can be perceived as a bad thing but regardless it happened somebody set the groundwork someone set the foundation and now we're in the crux, crux of the moment in our time where a new foundation and a new realities are being built for us and so you know what is the cultural expectation you know the expectations of what culture expects you to do that's what a cultural expectation is you know, depending where you're from, depending from what nationality you're born into, depending what country you come from, depending on your family structure, they all have expectations of you just just as for being human and how they want you to, you know, navigate the life and what you should be doing and how you should be doing it and how you should become, you know, who you are today. You know, the expectations of a family is to, you know, have a child, rear the child, you know, ch uh, help the child progress and learn, edu help the kid become educated so they can go out into the world and defend themselves and so they can carry their legacy. In many uh, cultures, the name and the oldest male, you know, and, uh, these are these are expectations that were put on. These are these are things that constructs that were built. So you have to follow along here. The male usually carry the name forward of the family. And the females not necessarily wasn't that way because she usually takes on the name of the, the spouse or the significant other. And so culturally, males would, you know, were perceived dominant. Males were perceived strong, 
not that women aren't it was just culturally it is and it's still kind of like that in the world it's still like that a lot where the male figures are perceived more dominant than the female figures but in native american traditions the females are actually the leaders they're the ones who follow they're the ones who uh, have the counsel of the, of the mothers you know mother's counsel and they're the ones who make the decisions and the males stand around them and protect them and guard them as they make their decisions what's best for the tribes now have we fallen away from that it's hard to say not really been plugged in too long too much any since of late i don't know how things are moving now with uh, covid and stuff but i know just roughly what five years ago that was those were important roles those roles may have shifted now but cultural expectations are just the things that culture expects you to do culture expects you to get a job culture expects you to pay your bills <clears throat> you know society expects you to be productive part of of the of the game and if you're not part of the game and you're not productive then what's 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 your use well, why are you here but you know it's true that's this is how society is is formed society is formed in a way where not everybody makes it to the top even though we want to make it to the top not every may not everybody makes it to the top because it's designed that way it's been culturally designed and the expectations are designed that way so certain groups of people don't make it to the top and certain people become oppressed now i'm not here to depress you i'm not here to frustrate you but but humanity has this weird magic about it sometimes out of that oppressed place there are people who come out of that and you know supersede and they 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 defy all expectations culturally or you know family or whatever they have this drive that you just can't you can't put a name on it can't label it they did the work sometimes things came easier for them sometimes it didn't but the idea is that the system that is in hand has been created for us to foster certain type of uh, personalities fostered to create certain types of worker bees if you don't think you're a worker bee if you don't think that you're part of the system in that capacity that you just think you're an individual you are but you're not you know if you look at anything if you if you would look at us if you would look at us from an outside perspective and not as a human and you look at it like you would look at a beehive you would be one of the workers or you'd be a, one of the male drones or you would be the female the queen or you know you would just you would have your part as you do in life right now you have your part and the part that you have is the part that you play now you play this part because you choose to play this part or this part has been presented to you most of our children do exactly what our parents do and most children go off to college and most kids try to get a degree and succeed in that capacity they work nine to five or nine to seven or whatever regardless but they have then you have another breed of people who they work from seven in the morning to 10 at night you know then you have business people who are just crafty and they know how to manipulate and use and let know how to leverage money and then they make tons of money now are they any different than you know they all have to sleep they all have to work they all have to drink they all have to eat they all have to you know go to the bathroom but the cool thing about it is you know that's that's the interesting thing about humanity that not everybody is made the same not everybody's built the same not everybody functions the same so culture has certain expectations now i'm going to be this is going to sound a little bit off so i don't want you to get upset with me i don't want you to think it but sometimes in certain cultures in our culture especially in america we look at different cultures and we and we look at people and we think that they should be a certain way because they come from a certain country okay this is these are things that we just observe and you've heard these things we look at asians they come to our country they come to our school and we label them they're supposed to be super smart intelligent and they're just their work ethic is impeccable is that true i don't know it seems like that sometimes and sometimes it doesn't we look at latinos hispanics you know and we have this image of what they look like <clears throat> everything's image and then we have then we create these expectations of these people to be a certain way and we don't even know we're doing it we don't even know that we're engaging in that because it's programming you know the culture creates these values families create values cultures create values 
So when we're moving through all these things, there's these value systems that we create. You know, we look at, you know, we look at men being paid more than women because we put a different kind of value on men than women because women, we don't value women the same way like some other countries may or may not. In some other countries, women aren't even valued at all, let alone here in this country, at least we value women to, to the extent that we, we see them, but, but we still have a long way to go. We don't even value children the same way other people value children. You know, our children here, we don't really value them the way we should value them. We love our children. We take care of them and we want them to do well. But but there's there's these cultural expectations about how we want things to be. And a lot of it is ingrained through religion and beliefs and ideologies that people create. So culture plays a big part of it. Even in shamanism, you know, there was a time where the shaman or the medicine man or woman... <clears throat> would have to take an apprentice and teach and carry on the, and the mission and continue that work so the so the people would have someone to help so they would actually ask come into the village and they would present and they would say hey your child has been marked or your child's been called to spirit to come work and then basically the shaman or the, the shamanica or the medicine woman or medicine man would take the child and they would raise the child to be you know the next healer Okay, now we kind of do that a little bit to some degree, you know, you know, everybody talks about how in Russia and certain countries you do what your parents do in a lot of culture, in our culture, we, we have a lot of people do that. And there are people, there's first generation, second generation doctors, first generation, second generation lawyers. There's also second generation, first generation people who, who are on welfare and who live off where because that's, there's families taught them that. And I'm not dissing or putting anybody down. It's a reality, my friends. It's 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 a system that has been created. The culture has an expectation of what they want and what they need. And sometimes your child or my child may be put into that category. And unfortunately, it's just that way. Can we change it? I'm pretty sure we can change it. Will we change it? That's to be that's to be dis discovered because we don't know if we're going to change it or not. We don't really know if we're willing to change it or not. We don't know if we're even capable of changing it or not. There's a lot of things, you know, that we have to work on that sometimes is seen and unseen. Sometimes the energy that we're working on is not is not in the forefront of our, our peripheral vision. You know, sometimes it's inside, it's inside of us, inside of our spirit and our soul. And we feel it. But, you know... The culture expects certain things to happen a certain way. America has a very diverse culture. America has a, a diverse culture of so many different people. And so many ideologies and beliefs. And like I said before. And this is a new concept that they're trying to roll out. It's called the salad concept. Everybody's piece of the salad. Because not everybody's in the melting pot. See, because here's culture trying to change it again before we were the we were the great melting pot of cultures and religions and beliefs we all melted in oh but that's that's not individual that's not that doesn't create individuality i would rather be a salad bowl i would rather be a tomato i would rather be a piece of lettuce or a cucumber i get that but even if you're lettuce piece of tomato or cucumber you do meld into religion even even if you're not part of the culture you're affected by it. You're, you're, you're influenced by it. You influence that. You know, Hispanic culture influences white culture. White culture influences Hispanic culture. Black culture influences black culture, vice versa, blah, blah, blah. And they all move in. And yet everybody lives in their own little, in their own little spaces. Caucasians roughly live in a, in a more uh, northern area. Latinos live in a more easternly southern area or westerly you know, blacks are pushed into a certain area. And this is fact. This isn't something that I'm making up. This is something that's been studied and been looked at. You know, this is why when you look at bus routes, you have to look at bus routes, why they create bus routes. And when they create these new shopping centers, who are the people working there? How do they get people there? A lot of developments don't happen because they don't know. They have to bring in a bus route in order to bring workers into the area. Because most people who live in the area... Or well to do have money and they're not usually the ones in the stores working you know but these are the cultural expectations 
These are the things. Minorities get pushed into the inner cities or into uh, different parts of regions of their of their communities as other cultures and other other um, ethnicities move into certain regions of their community. These, this is not nothing new. This is nothing that has not been talked about. These are the seriousnesses of our conversations that we should have, but we don't talk about it because people are afraid to offend somebody. People are afraid to say something wrong that might, might be misconstrued and misunderstood. But this is how we learn. When we talk, we learn. You know, we don't have, we don't come into conversations sometimes knowing everything. We come into conversations and we're we're enlightened. We learn about things that we didn't know about before. And sometimes we're we come into conversations and we're the ones bringing the knowledge as much as you know the knowledge and wisdom that needs to be heard and needs to be you know shared amongst the group. But we we create these divisions amongst ourselves culturally because we're different because we want to be different because we want to be recognized for our our uniqueness and for where we come from because we're proud you know we're proud to be you know african we're proud to be peruvian we're proud to be mexican we're proud to be canadian we're proud to be irish or wherever you come from or italian etc 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 but yet even though we come from all these places if you were to go to these countries, they do the same thing. You go to Peru, they segregate, they separate, they push aside. Indigenous people move into the cities, but they get pushed out into the out out into the more poor areas. You know, rich people lived in the in the other areas or well-to-do middle-class people. So the the pattern repeats itself even in the cultures that you come from, even the cultures that you want to sustain and can keep alive. That still plays out in those countries. You know, you go to any country you visit, you'll they'll always try. You know, they'll always try to show you the pretty side of things, and they try to avoid showing you the ugliness and the dark stuff. But it's there, just like here in Columbus. I can take you to Columbus. And I can drive, you know, ten miles or five miles this way, or even go a mile that way, and I can show you some amazing houses. Then I can go this way, this direction, and I can show you, a, you know, a neighborhood that's just riddled with poorness and boarded up you know, windows and doors and you're like, man, this is in my city? Sure it is. Because of cultural expectations. Now here's the thing, there's a tipping scale. You know, because when everybody wants to come out of that that poverty stricken mentality, who do you leave to do the other the things you do? Now when you now when you watch now that COVID has come, COVID has created a new way of thinking too. People who used to um really depend on certain jobs no longer want to return to those jobs they don't feel like they they're better they feel like they they deserve more you know you see um, burger kings you see restaurants especially restaurants closed down because they're not able to sustain the workforce they used to have and now we're also encouraging people to uber eats uh door dong and door ding you know i don't want to i don't want to spawn i don't want to give them a plug even though I gave one already, you know, and, and they have learned to get 30% from the, from the owners and the owners don't make any money. And it's just, a, it's a, it's like this, this, this new paradigm shift of how you're doing business, this new cultural expectation. Now you, you don't go in and eat anymore. You just call it in and they'll bring it to you. But there are people making millions and millions of dollars on this, on this pandemic. And do they have the right to make it? Sure. As long as people support it and they feel like that's it's ethical. And this is what's going on. This is what's happening right now. You know, that people are learning to live life differently. You know, there's no such thing as normal life because, you know, who, 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 are, you, who are you comparing it to? Who, who? Where's the scale? Where's the sliding scale? Who are you comparing normal to? What is normal? Are you Is normal compared to Afghanistan? Is normal compared to Brazil, Peru, Canada? I mean, what is your scale? And, you know, what is normal? I mean, really, what is it? You know, are you comparing yourself to the guy who lives in Murfield? Are you comparing yourself to the guy that lives in Clintonville? Now, all good people probably, right? But they just have a different expectation. A different cultural expectation. Rich people want their, rich, their kids to be rich. That's their cultural expectation. They teach their kids to be rich. They teach their kids how to manipulate that system. How to use that system to their benefit. 
as well as people who are in lower income. They also teach their kids to have expectations and move out. But there are also people in that lower income bracket that teach their kids kids how to use the system to benefit and to use. Don't kid yourself, my friends. This is reality. This is truth. I have friends. I've learned. I hear. I listen. You know, I saw my parents, you know, when they struggled and stuff and how they had to manipulate the system to the best of their ability in order to get what they want so they could feed their kids because they didn't have the opportunities. But then there's then there comes a moment in time where you're able to move into an area where you can actually do something about it, where you can actually make a better life for yourself. And there's able you're able to do what you need to do, but it doesn't know it's not always easy. You know, but see, when we start to work on ourselves and we start to see the veil open up and remove, and this is what's happening right now during the pandemic. <clears throat> There's a culture expectation that people feel that people have to do a certain thing. There's a culture expectation right now. And this is not all across the board because culture expectation is depending what culture you fall into and what beliefs you fall into, there are certain things that you want to happen. And this is what we're trying to navigate right now. We're trying to navigate the cultural expectations of what it means to be a human being in in a pandemic sort of life, my pandemic life, and what that means. There are people who have expectations that you should wear a mask. There are people who have uh, cultural expectations that you should be vaccinated. And on the other foot, you have an other culture expectations that I want my freedoms. I want to be not told what to do. This is America. Get out of my face. And I'm not here to tell which one's right or wrong because I don't know which one's right or wrong. Excuse me. But you're going to look at me go, oh, but Iggy, you're in a position to help a lot of people. You know, even though I'm in the position to help a lot of people to make decisions, it's not fair to me to give my opinion about what is best for your health, what is best for your body. Because I'm not your doctor. I'm not qualified to give you that answer. And even if there's people telling you that, they, listen, there are doctors who agree with doctors. There are doctors who disagree with doctors with all the information that's being moved around right now. Who's right, who's wrong? It depends what cultural expectation you want to fall in. What expectations you have for what you want your life to look like, what you want your world to be like, what you, how you want to see the people around you. This is a cultural, you know, you know, revision, you know, a cultural revamp of what, how we want to see the world. Now, some things are going to be challenged. Some things are going to be pushed to the extreme, but this is what happens when you, when you have this. You know, in our lifetime, we're not experienced it, but there are people who have been alive who have experienced these kind of things close to it. And they did certain things to avoid it. Similar things that we're doing now. But to understand the cultural expectations of another culture, you have to be able to step back and and observe why they feel the way they do. Because if you don't step back and watch what they're doing, what happens is other people uh, dominate the landscape and when you dominate the landscape what happens is you know when you dominate it it's it's the way you want it to be and it, so it isolates the other people's ideas beliefs and feelings and emotions of how they want it and then basically what they do they're forced to play the game that they didn't want to play on both sides you know on both sides now what will happen here in the next 30 to 60 to 90 days i don't know we'll find out we'll we'll find out together as we progress as we move through life as we're moving into the places we need to be in learning the things we have to learn but regardless we're going to go we're going to go into a place that's going to be uncomfortable for a while it's going to be energies that we're not used to they're going to be people who speak up who have never spoke up they're going to be people who spoke up who are just going to be be quiet the whole thing's just shifting, totally shift. But what humanity forgets, what humanity totally forgets and totally disregards is why we're in the situation we're in. Just totally forgets, just totally is oblivious to why we're in the place we are. We're oblivious because we take everything for granted. We take everything, you know, without consideration. 
We take everything without knowing that we actually cause the problems that we have. You know, when man fumbles around in experiments and does things, you know, that they do. And they manipulate Mother Earth. They manipulate the Gaia. They manipulate the children of the Gaia. You know, who's to say Mother Earth isn't inoculating herself to get rid of us? Because that's what happens. This Mother Earth is alive, my friends. She has her cultural expectation, too, of what her planet should be like, what her body should be like, what she should feel like. And when you're not in congruence with her, she's not in congruence with you. And then she'll find a way to eradicate you and eliminate you. And you know what? And she's done that because we don't know how the earth functions. We don't know how the universe functions. We have we have we have a limited scope and ideas of how things work. Who's to say that Mother Earth can't call in a comet or a meteor or an asteroid and have it crash into her? Oh, no, no, that's impossible. How can that happen? I don't know, you know. But listen, you don't know nothing. Oh, that's a conspiracy. That's not a conspiracy theory. You have no. You can't prove to me that you can't prove to me differently that 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 does that wouldn't be a possibility. You don't know how the communi how the the universe communicates with one another because you're in the construct of cultural expectations in the small gamut of what you're doing listen when you're in the small gamut of expectations how can you have higher expectations if you're not even letting allowing other people to have expectations of what that's good for their life i believe the earth is a, is a living sentient being like you and me and she has rights and she he needs to be taken care of and protected. From us, we're capable to do the right thing. Why don't we create a cultural expectation where the earth is important? As much as important as putting gas in your car. You know, as much expectation when, you know, then when we harness her energies, that we give back some something back. You know, when I was growing up in the 70s, there was a big push to not litter, you know. There was Hoot the Owl and Smokey the Bear and all these things. And you know what? That put the fear of God in us a little bit. Did not throw paper out the door, out the car window. And when our parents would do it, we're like, oh, Dad, you can't throw the paper out the window. And you know, and you watch your kids. They kind of do that right now, too. You know, there are kids who are like, you know, saying whatever they say or talk to whoever you do. But in this, ne this new generation of kids see the world much differently than we do. And every generation will always see the world much differently because... They have to adapt and create new cultural expectations for their world because the parameters in the world that we created for them it doesn't work for them. It doesn't work for them. It doesn't work for, and listen, it doesn't work for us to some extreme, but yet we, we make it through. There are some things we could change and we don't change it because we're so accustomed to using it the exact same way all the time. And it's always going to be that way. It's these religious beliefs, these, these political beliefs and stuff how it should be right now you know it's very ego ego driven society you know the egos play a big part of why the world is the way it is can we have peace well it depends what peace is to you depends what peace requires to you what it, what that what is that expectation is it a cultural expectation of peace or is it just a general peace because peace can mean so many different things to people Peace might mean that I might have to like you, and I don't really want to like you. Peace might mean that I have to that you like me and I like you, and that's great. But human beings put so much constructs and so much energy into creating dysfunction, conjunction function. What's your function, right? And sometimes they get in their own way. <coughs> and sometimes humans, you know, we're our worst enemies. Get some water here, real quick. I think it's getting a little dry. Ooh, that's good. But regardless, humanity right now, I don't want to say it's at a tipping point, but humanity is at a place where they have to make some decisions that are beneficial for not just the individual, but for everybody. Everybody has to work together. You know, it's it's not about just just me anymore it's not you know there used to be the big push 
well, it's, it's me. I got to take care of me. If I can't take care of me. Yeah, you still have to take care of you. But in the process, you also are creating expectations of yourself, which creates expectations of the world. And that world creates expectations for you. Now, you can't just do whatever you want. You can't walk around and just be who you want to be sometimes. You may feel like you are. You may feel like you're free. But the culture has their expectations, right? You have to pay for a take, ticket to go here. You have to pay for gas to go there. The culture the culture has created an expectation. <coughs> Excuse me. Pardon me. The culture has created an expectation of what, how this culture, sh how this society should work and how it should function. And so those parameters change. You won't see, you won't see the things that you usually see. You know, if you want free gas, if you want free, you know, heat or whatever, you have to give something back. What will you give back? That's what we don't know. Right now we're changing uh, greenbacks for all the services we have. And it's just paper and it's just energy. This is the sign to the work that we're doing. And this energy is, is money. Energetic flow. And so right now, we're in the process of rediscovering ourselves who we are. This is a time where things will fall away. This is a time where things will disappear. This is a time where, you know, you're going to see a lot of shifting of belief systems and ideologies. This is going to be a time of challenging you know, all over the world, challenging the system that's already in front of us and the ideas and the and the beliefs that were put in front of us. This is also a very dangerous time to eradicate and change things that maybe did work to the benefit of other people. But a lot of it we won't know until it's there. This is also a time of birthplace for uh, new ideas, either very radical thinking or very, you know, positive or negative thinking, regardless this is a time, anytime we're in a crisis like this, you're going to create new ideologies and beliefs. And then the culture is going to have expectations of what is good and what is not, and what is not, what is not value for the culture, what is not good for the culture. You know, the physical, the spiritual, all that part gets affected. You know, you start to watch that how the world is navigating and what the world is expectation. You know, it's easy to create a thought. It's easy to create an idea and that thing go crazy and run off and everybody grab onto it and believe it. These are the kind of things we have to be careful with. Because those ideologies and those beliefs can be ingrained into our spirit and our soul and our mind to the point where we believe it so hard, so hard, so wholeheartedly that nothing can change us from feeling or thinking that way. And that happens a lot in society. It happens a lot in the world where we create these expectations, these cultural expectations of what, how people should behave and how people should be. Because that's the way it was taught to us. We have these expectations to do. When you're American, you stand up and you, 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 you pledge allegiance to the flag. When you go into church, you pray. You go into church, you put the holy water on you. These are cultural expectations. They, these are things that they expect you to do. When you do it, sometimes they challenge you, sometimes they don't. But then it's, it's the whole. It's the people... It's it's the people who get who challenge you. Not so much, not so much the authoritative part of it, but it's the folks who watch you, the folks who are observing you, the folks who you know are in your life, your friends, your family, your significant others. Those are the people who have the biggest influence in you, you know. And so, the biggest thing is to find your inner inner oneness your guru yourself who you are and what does that mean like my my mentor john mcmullen used to say i'm more goo than rue you've heard me say this on show you know we have these beliefs and then we attach these beliefs onto ourselves and then we share them to the world and this is what happens to kids a lot and so you know young young adults they have their beliefs and then they share it to the world or they have their beliefs from their parents or from their grandparents whoever raised them and then they share it to the world and the world goes yeah, get out of here who taught you that where'd you get that from that's some crazy stuff brother oh no man i'm i'm an individual oh no man or the other way can happen too oh that's pretty cool who taught you that that's pretty amazing somebody really cared about you somebody really taught you that oh wow and then sometimes people are just indifferent and defiant because remember most of us grew up defiant 
8, 10, 13, you know, in that age group, you know, we're all defiant. We're all trying to find our way. We're all trying to be individuals. We all know more than we think we know. And we probably know some things, but we probably don't know nothing. Kind of like when you get to be an adult. Then most of our life, we grew up trying to be defiant, you know, to authority, defiant to everything that's not, not, that's not molding us. But yet, when you look around, you know, when you, when you look around, people think they're individuals. All the kids think they're individuals, even adults, but they all buy Nike shoes and they all wear Nike shoes. They all wear the same high tops or they're all wearing the same jeans. They're all wearing the same outfit. And you're supposed to be individual. You're supposed to be creative uh, individuality. And yet you're all dressed alike. You're all look alike. You all got the same baseball cap on, you know? You all buy the same underwear. Why? Because cultural expectation. They expect you to purchase and buy the things that they sell. Oh, wow. Did that freak somebody out? That you're not an individual? Sorry to tell you. But when, you know, you see a bunch of teenagers that all dress up, oh, I just want to be myself. But then they all cut themselves. You know, they paint themselves dark and their hair is, you know, they're either emo or dreadlocked or buzzed or whatever or shaved head. And yet then they hang out with everybody together and they think they're individuals. <laughs> it's just funny. It cracks me up. You know, I, well, I do that too. I was a kid too. I did that. I wanted to have the shaved side hair, you know, and I wanted to be like that guy, you know. And, you know, was I trying to find my individuality through that cultural expectation? That experience, that cultural experience? Is that something that I wanted to be engaged with? Sure. Because I was trying to find my way. I was trying to find, like you do, like you're trying to find your way. And we all know people like this. You go to a sporting event, right? Everywhere wears the same thing. Why? Because culturally, the expectation is that we support our team. We don't ridicule our team. We don't put our team down. We only get mad at them when they're on a losing streak. When they're winning, we're with them. But when they're losing, we hate them. But yet, we're still loyal to them because you know what? It's still our team. Darn it, I love the Browns. Win or lose, I still love those guys. Is that a cultural expectation? It's a cultural expectation in indoctrination, yes. Because you become part of something that's bigger than you. You become part of something that is uh, brings... A sense of joy to you a sense of community a sense of culture a sense of connection so when you're you're, you're when your team's bad you still support them because you feel like you have to you can't veer from that you can't run off and join another team because they're winning no you stay close to the things you like and we learn that in life and sometimes we, we're in relationships and we're in partnerships that don't serve us because we're loyal to them loyal to the idea and loyal to the feelings that we have to stick around because if we don't stick around then we're not very good people then we're not we didn't try hard enough that we didn't give enough because loyalty is one of those things that can be very very good or very bad depending how you look at it but the cultural expectation is we have to be part of something have you ever talked to people and they go so what's your favorite sports team and then sometimes they go well i don't like sports and then you look and you're a sporty guy right you're going you don't like sports at all? Like nothing? No, no, I've never played sports before. I don't like sports. But you have people like that. They've never, they've never been part of that because that wasn't their calling. That wasn't their, their, there wasn't their expectation. That wasn't their cultural connection. And then you have other people who are just totally radical, fanatical, and they have the whole basement is full of, you know. You know, memorabilia and, you know, the shirts, the, the figurines, the bobbleheads, you name it. Because that's their sense of belonging. That's their sense of the cultural expectation. That if they're part of something, that I will be recognized. And even though I love it, it's, it, no, it's me. I love, I just love it. Yeah, you, 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 do, you do love it. But also you're part of that culture. Because then the next time you meet somebody who is, who's in your vibration who thinks like you, talks like you, eats like you. And then you can talk and share about these things. You can say, oh yeah, you know what? Next thing you know, you're, both, you're all talking about the same thing and you know exactly. It's because it's the culture. It's the culture and the culture has the expectations. And you can't be wrong. You have to know your stuff. You have to be able to navigate. You have to be able to share that information. You know, you digest it, you regurgitate it, and you share it. And, you know, people who are in this culture and these expectational cultures, they know if you know. They know if you're on board. They know if you're 
what level you're at. Oh, this guy knows all this stuff. This guy's really good. This guy knows more than I did. And I broke it down to the simplest form of sports because Americans love their sports. And, you know, Americans aren't the only ones. I mean, other cultures love their sports, too. Soccer is like a crazy a sport around the world where everybody knows everybody. Like, majority people, like in my country, a bit, vast majority, not everybody, but a vast majority of people know all the teammates on the national team, their te favorite team that plays f futsal or, or plays soccer. And they know it. Because that's the culture expectation that this is our sport. This is how we're bonded. This is how we all connect. This is how we're all unified <clears throat> under one banner, under one culture, one country. My country plays in the World Cup. The culture expectation is we support our team thick or thin. If they lose, we lose together, you know. And if they win, we're champions too. Because through the process of osmosis, we have created and we have become part of that. And we are, we help create that because we, you know, you did because you energetically, you put your energy and move that frequency into that space. So when you're part of a club, when you're part of a team, your, your presence is known. Your presence is known. You feel when the fans are cheering, all that energy, all that frequency vibrates because energetically we all vibrate at different frequencies, but we all can harmonize in the same frequency. You know, because when when uh, when a singer, and I just learned to say, when a singer sings at the frequency of the crystal glass and it shatters, it's because the voice has matched the frequency of that glass, and they can't. It's almost like they can't occupy the same space at the same time, and the glass breaks. Same way. So right now, there's a lot of talk about frequency. He, you know, sound healing. We call it sound healing in the holistic metaphysical community, but now science is trying to explore: can we change the frequency in people's bodies to heal them from? You know, uh, diseases that, you know, is not can be treated with uh, modern medicine. You know, sometimes old world religions, old world beliefs have some very in, uh, ancient mystical properties because that's all we had back then. We didn't have the the, the realms of, uh, you know, popping a pill, you know, sh you know taking an aspirin. But yet aspirin is from a tree, right? And just different things like that. Licorice is from, you know from a root you have all these things you have a slippery elm you know it's part of a tree to help you know with our, your digestion you, and it's just it's it's funny because science extracts from nature the components that it feels that it needs but sometimes science forgets that the whole medicine is in the whole plant but the culture expectation is i need to put it in a pill and i need to sell it to you and a lot of people won't buy won't go to herbalist won't go to a, a metaphysic or a holistic person because they've been so conditioned culturally to pop a pill buy a pill and go to the doctor the doctor knows best now if i break my leg sure i want to go to the emergency room get cast on it most likely my guy probably doesn't know how to do that unless we're out in the woods maybe he can help me but no sage is going to help me but there are some there's room for everything to coexist how they coexist i don't know this, that's to be determined that's you know finding the wisdom in the things that are already there when we find the wisdom in the things that are in front of us we can do some amazing things we can do some pretty powerful things but we have to believe but cultural expectation is very powerful you know the cultures that we come from the cultures we're part of the part, cultures that we're indoctrinated they have expectations of what they want us to be and what they want us to do and how they want us to behave and that's where a lot of that's why you have a lot of people who rebel because they don't want to be part of the system they don't want to be part of that that indoctrination because a part of them does not resonate with that a part of them doesn't connect with that and you know some of us feel the same way but yet we comply we comply we just go ahead and we do it oh well you know how bad can it be i don't know you work till you're seven years old and then you retire and then five years later you die or you die sooner than that. You die because you don't have purpose. Because the culture expectation is now you're done. Just wait your turn to go to the grave. There's no celebration of life. But we can create these things. You know, these are the things that we can create. You know, celebration of life. You know, you get a gold watch when you retire. What's that? You, you, you're more worth a gold watch any day, right? 
But we have to change it. If we want to see the changes, we have to be the changes that we want to see. If you want to see the world in a light that is best how you need it to be, how you want it to look, you have to be the one who, in your in the ones who follow you and the ones who you follow to change that. Will it change everything? No, but it'll change a small group and that might be enough. You know, we can create cultures, subcultures and all these different cultures within, you know, cultures and within our life. And we have all these things that happen. And cultural, these, these cultural ideologies, these cultural expectations affect the world. Everything you do today is because of cultural expectation. The culture expects you to do things a certain way and that's it. You know, you can drive a car without a license. But there's a cultural expectation that you need a license because if you don't have a license, you're not, you're not, in, you're not in compliance. The, if you're in an accident, you're going to be liable. You, you won't be able to get insurance. It's a system. It's all a system. It's all, we're free and not free. You know what I'm saying? We're, we're free, but not free at the same time. We have this illusion of freedom. You know, we think that we were able to just do whatever we want. You know, we can, you know, listen, walking down the street and being able to drive to the next state over that's not the same as freedom freedom that's a freedom but that's not the freedom that is being able to do and be part of but even when you go you have to drive on the road but the road is there right because we paid for it you know sometimes we have to go 65 sometimes we can go 70 sometimes we can go 55 but yet there are people who push it and they go faster right and they don't get caught. But the culture expectation is that we have to drive 70. Because if we drive 70, you'll save on fuel, less accident. There's there's, there's these standards. These are things we do. You know? But that's how it is. Culture expectation. Send our kids to school. Have strangers raise them. Have strangers teach them. Are they strangers? Sure they are. You don't know anything about your teacher. You only know what your teacher, what the teacher is, tells you. Or what the resume says. You don't know hidden agendas. You don't know if they're teaching you things. You don't, you don't, you don't know this. I can tell you stories about teachers, but that's for another show. You know, when it's convenient, they're teachers. And when it's not convenient, you know, they're, they're pushing their agendas forward onto our kids because they have the ability and they have the choice to do. They don't have the choice. They are given the opportunity to share their experiences with our kids. Why do you think kids, when they come out of school, have, you know, these ideas and why they have, because someone has influence them someone has shown them a different light someone has shown them a different way of living someone has shown them a different way to express and then the culture will decide if this person is either a racist or this person is gay or this person is a radical this guy's you know this or that because that's what cultures do they label you you get labeled you get pigeonholed but then social society also raises you up as well Oh, this guy's a good person. This chick's a good person. This person's good. Oh, this person, blah, blah, blah. You know, you know, the cultural expectation has, is very pronounced, but we don't see it because we're living it. We're living in it. We, we are engaging in it. So you don't have time to, you know, to separate because you're just going through the motion. You're going through the thing. Now, is your child better at homeschooled? Possibly. Yes. I'm not going to say no. Will your child have um, is able to function outside and be able to uh, navigate, you know, society and know how to be with other people because they've been homeschooled? There's so many things that they throw at people because they want to raise their kid. Listen, regardless of if you go, you go to school or not go to school or you're homeschooled, you're going to engage with people outside of your community regardless. And that's how it's going to be. And most of the time you dictate how many people you really want to talk to or if you want to talk to anybody. Or you want to be part of something. But regardless, our cultures around the world, they have expectations of what their citizens and their people should do. The cultural expectation of religion, beliefs, you know. And, you know, just, it's all there. It's because those things have been laid before us. Can we change them? I mentioned that earlier in the show. Yes and no. Some things serve us. Some things are beneficial. Some things are just really good. Some things work. And some things, they just work. People just keep doing it because we've always been doing them. You know? Do Why do Americans drive on the right side of the road instead of the left side of the road? Is it because we're, we're going to be defiant? 
Is that a word we talked about earlier? We want to be different. We want to be this way because that way is not this. It's just, it's just, it's just how it is. You know, it's like cities, you know, some cities were built in circles and then they squared them off. There's a whole show about Circleville, Ohio and how the roads were, were circular, circular. And then eventually they, they cut the, the buildings and they made everything squared up over time. That's a culture expectation. The culture didn't want circles. They wanted squares. But it's expectation. You know, the Native Americans, their cultural expectation is that no man no or woman earn own the earth. That concept wasn't was not in their in their realm of belief. You know, because the land was the land. And then when natives saw that the white man was able to parcel off lands and sell it and make money off of it, it was a it was kind of a shocker. It was like, whoa. How's that possible? Cultural expectation. The culture expects. The culture creates. The culture dominates. So that's why sometimes a lot of people from different cultures get manipulated or they're able to be coerced or pushed in certain situations. You know, right now, we're, we were trying to impose cultural expectations on the Middle East. And it didn't fare well, obviously, as we can see. Why didn't it fare well? Because we're battling other people's cultural expectations of what they, how they see their world, not our world. You can't give somebody a world that they're not, they don't have no clue or even want. For us to go, and I'm talking about America, for us to go and to create cultural expectations in another place that's had cultural expectations that's much older than yours, it's going to be very difficult. Now, they get a taste of it, then there will be a group of people who will move and navigate towards that. And maybe over time, they create new culture expectations for their for their people. Until then, you're not going to see that. That's why you don't see uh, when there's... Even when old empires conquered people, they trying to create cultural expectations, how they wanted the people to live. And did it work out? No, it never did. It did for a while, it did for a period of time. But people never forgot because they would hide in secrecy and, and still share their expectations of their culture. They still shared their religion. They still shared their beliefs. Even if it was in secrecy in the dark, it was still shared. And that's why they, they carried on and they're still here. They weren't stamped out, but there were some that were stamped out because they wouldn't conform. They weren't willing to, you know, bow down to the new culture expectation of, that was expected of them. Human beings are very, very, very uh, fighters. You know, we fight. We have the, we're ingrained and we believe. When we believe something, we believe with all our heart. And when we don't believe something, we believe with all our heart. Believe it or not, it has the other effect too. But regardless, my friends, I hope that I was able to explain a little bit about culture expectations, the opportunities it brings and the opportunities it takes away as well. I know we covered a lot of stuff. I try to talk about things here that, you know, it will expand our minds, be able to talk outside of the parameters of this show to share. And this is why I call my show Igor Say Live, The Naked Shaman, because, you know, there's, that's how we change cultural expectations. For example, like I can't put The Naked Shaman on my titles because it won't, the, uh, the algorithm won't let me share it. Because it's it's just looking at naked. And so I have a hard time promoting it that way. That's why I promote it within the show and talk about it. But that's kind of how it is. There's an expectation. Even in, in social media, there's an expectation that they're creating for their community. Which kind of goes and contradicts everything that we know outside in the outside world. But that's it, my friends. I wanted to share with you. And I really thank you for being with me tonight. I hope you enjoyed our topic. I hope if you want to share something and other topics, let me know. Send me a line. DM me. Let me know if there's something you want me to talk about. And, you know, stop by my salt spa at SerenitySaltSpa.com. Go online and check it out. IggyGarcia.com as well with Insights Radio, who hosts my show. And, you know, just do the best you can in this culture of expectations. Do the best you can to be who you are 
and try to navigate the world the best you can. So with that, I want to say, Ho'oponopono, matakwiasan, irisikwi, aho, go out and just be the best version of yourself. Do what you have to do in order to find that bliss inside you, that guru inside you. Do what you need to do to be who you need to be for yourself, not for anybody else. Because if you try to do it for somebody else, it's never going to work. Because the other person is looking for you to heal yourself so they can heal themselves. And remember, all healing is self-healing. It's good to be here. And I say it, it's good to be here. And I will see you guys at Ash Cave on September 12th from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. in Hocking Hills, Ohio. Take care, my friends. Bye-bye.